Hello, dear Concordia family. Here we are on another Wednesday evening, ready for Wednesday devotion and still in home quarantine. It is wonderful to see you tonight. And we are now going to start this time of devotion in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, we are going to focus on my home country of Germany and the things that are going on there, because Germany, as you probably know, has also been uh, very affected by the coronavirus. They have many cases. Germany has been a country that has been in the news in Australia a bit because people have said that the Germans have got very high case numbers, but praise the Lord, their deaths have been quite low. And having said that, they still have over 160,000 infections and over 4,000 deaths, which is still quite a large number. But we are thankful that they have made some decisions that have been able to contain the amounts of deaths that they've had in their hospitals and their nursing homes. And we're going to pray for the German people today and we're going to hear from a German today about the situation that uh, they personally feel is happening in Germany at the moment. And we are also going to hear about a German theologian called Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who died pretty much two weeks ago, 75 years ago. And I think he has some really great words to say, to speak into our situation today. And most of all, we're going to spend time in prayer together and in studying the word. And today we have a passage that is sometimes called the mini gospel or the gospel in a nutshell. It is John 3.16 and ongoing verses. And many of you, if not all of you, have had to learn this particular verse in Sunday school because it encapsulates the whole of the scripture in a simple verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We're going to unpack this today and think about what that means for us today, here, now, in home quarantine, with corona outside, and in general life as we journey with our Lord. So let's begin. We're going to begin today. Today's reading is from John chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict, light, has come into the world. But people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light of fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The human struggle with darkness meets us in every time of our lives. As a mum of small children, I can see that they are obsessed to enact the struggle between good and evil, light and darkness every day. For children, these two things are clearly cut out. Someone or something is either good or evil. There is only black and white. But as we grow up, we realize that there is a lot of gray in between. Things and people 
and only good or only evil. All things and all people can be both good and evil. What about the coronavirus? Some people who particularly suffer because of COVID-19 see the dark sides of it clearly. I've lost my job because of it. My husband died because of it. I can't travel to see my loved ones because of it. Others are astonished to see the positive things the coronavirus has caused in our society. I'm a natural introvert and love that I can work from home and not go on outings and everyone is okay with it. I carry a lot less guilt within myself now because all outside activities have stopped and I'm not expected to do all these things. This time has allowed our family to spend quality time together without the rush of multiple daily activities to go to. Have you heard the flora and fauna are loving the decreased pollution and it has positive effects on the environment? There are bad things and good things connected with the coronavirus inflicted quarantine. Today, we focus on the country of Germany, a country that has seen a lot of hardship in its long history. Battles, plagues, sieges, droughts, floods, and more wars and pestilences. The country has seen it all. God and the Bible have been constant companions for many Germans, for centuries. How many times would the passage from John 3 that we just heard have been read out in churches, comforted the longing ears of suffering people, encouraged the weary during hard times? One such encourager was the parish pastor and theological lecturer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I bring him up today because on Maundy Thursday, just two weeks ago, was the 75th anniversary of his martyrdom at a concentration camp. Before he was hanged, he called out, this is the end, but for me, the beginning of life. What brought Dietrich Bonhoeffer to the gallows? Through a conversion experience where the Holy Spirit revealed to him with clarity that God is not simply a theological concept, but our loving Father who journeys through all of life with us. Bonhoeffer recognised earlier than most others how evil the Hitler administration was. While most congregations in Germany went along with the government, Bonhoeffer was very actively supportive of a small church body who took a stand against Hitler and his politics. He gave all his time and money also towards teaching young vicars aspiring to be pastors that Jesus was a way of life and required constant application of the scriptures on all situations and circumstances. This man pointed people to think outside of the box, outside of their worldview, and to take on a Christ view. And this constantly got him into trouble with authorities and then landed him in prison. And here, in prison, despite being worried and frightened as a human being, he totally clung to God and realised all the more that the only thing that made up his identity was to be a child of God, redeemed, 
loved, inherent of the promise of eternal life in God's glory. That is the only thing that mattered. The only thing important was to be with God and to live a life according to him in the light. Even in the, in the darkness of this prison, others saw the Christ light radiant brightly from him. We are not imprisoned in our homes, even though we are quarantined with COVID-19. But we can be prisoners to ourselves, held hostage by the darkness we carry inside. No matter how bright and appealing our surroundings may look, that inner darkness can dim all light. And I'm not talking about depression here. That is another heavy burden and also holds us prisoners. I'm talking about the darkness that comes from the things in our heads, the grudges we hold, the bitterness we harbour against others, the unclean thoughts and fantasies we have in secret, the anger that becomes overwhelming for us at times. The list is long. I feel convicted. It certainly seems a lot easier to cover up, push our thoughts away, deny, and not bother dealing with these things. We put those things back into the darkness they came from. But strangely enough, darkness seems to attract more darkness and the problems only seem to grow rather than get smaller. The answer, our only answer is Christ. Whatever it is that causes you this darkness or the many things that are there, you don't have to expose them before other people, but be brave and expose them to God. Be assured, God, who's already seen those things, and he's still right here beside you, lovingly resting his hand on your shoulder as he journeys with you. Allow God to shine his light on the darknesses inside and his bright radiance will clear your vision. Our shortcomings and our need for our loving saviour will actually never diminish this is not a once and for all kind of act. This is a lifestyle of bringing all our burdens regularly to the foot of the cross where the healing blood of Christ covers them over. We need to look to Jesus, our bright son, the way, the truth and the life. We have an intense need for Christ. Our whole life is spent discerning what is good and what is evil and getting better in the art of distinguishing those two things. John 3, 16 to 21 that we read today shows us the way here. John tells us at the start of his gospel that Christ is the true light that gives light to everyone and therefore lights our way. Our way, which is also the Christ way, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We must look to the light, to Christ, to know the way. That's how we can distinguish between light and darkness, good and evil, right and wrong. We must measure everything around us, all things said and done, all situations and reactions, on Christ. And how do we do that? By getting to know Jesus better. As we meet Jesus in the pages of the Bible and invite him to journey with us through life, through every moment of every day, 
we can consistently see God revealed to us. And this revelation is not changing from page to page, from moment to moment. Our God whom we meet in Jesus is the great, constantly loving Father, constantly longing for us to journey with him, constantly leading and guiding us on if we seek to stay in step with him. I'll read you this amazing promise again. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. If we live in the promise of these words at our life's end, we can say, this is the end. But for me, the beginning of life. We are now going to hear from a German resident who will share about her experiences with the coronavirus and what it's like to live in Germany at the moment in the face of this pandemic. And I am absolutely very overwhelmingly pleased to announce that this is my mum. And this is wonderful in so many ways. This is the first time that I'm able to include my mum in a service. And I invite you now to listen to her, her statement. Hello from Leipzig in Germany, dear Concordia congregation. It's Marina here, Maria's mum. The most of you will know me. First, I hope all of you are well in this Corona time. Normally, Thomas and me would be in Dunkirk at the moment to spend time with our beloved grandchildren, Julia, Sophia and Vincent, and with Maria and Michael. But life changed extremely in the last time. No flights worldwide, no possibility to come together with the far away families for an undefined time. This is personally for Thomas and me the hardest impact in this corona crisis. A lot of those are on my mind at the moment. Otherwise, one of the positive things of the crisis is the amazing creativity of the people to arrange the daily life as normal as possible. So, per example, I can follow your Sunday worship or like now can be part of Maria's Wednesday devotion. It's a great idea of Maria and a good possibility for me to give a short overview about the current situation in Germany. We are here in Germany pretty good situated compared to other countries worldwide. The government reacted very early with strong restrictions like lockdown, no contact to other person, closing of all shops and stores, all restaurants and pubs, closing of schools, child care and universities. The biggest advantage in Germany is, I think, the very good, solid and strong situated health system with high standards in all parts. So there are enough beds in the intensive care unit, good stuffed hospitals and a high medical standard. The dead cases are low compared to the infection cases here and compared to other countries. A lot of infected persons are recovered. The new infection cases drop slowly and the restriction of daily life become loose. So the smaller stores, hardware stores, hard dresser, etc. can open again since Monday. Schools will open step by step at the beginning of May, beginning with the primary schools and graduation classes. The main feeling here is the things are good organized and managed of the government. The people are most very disciplined and as different the people are, so different they feel the restriction, more or less, more 
or less hard. I think it's not too hard to stay home for a while, no shopping or live entertainment for a limited time. More important and the human want is the direct contact with the family, relatives, friends and other persons. And so I hope step by step it will come back to normality again. I send you all my best wishes and I hope to see you in Dunkirk soon, sooner than later. Goodbye. Thank you to my dear mum for taking time to talk to us and to share with us what it's like in Germany at the moment. We're now coming to a time of prayer. Before we start to pray, I would like to share a short story with you from within our Concordia family. Most of you will know about the Artania cruise ship, a German cruise ship that was docked at Fremantle and had 76 COVID-19 patients on board. A lot of them were Germans. All of those COVID-19 patients were taken to Junilab Hospital, uh, where two of those Germans died in intensive care. It came to the attention of Richarda in our congregation that these Germans are sitting in their hospital totally isolated. A lot of them can't even speak any English and they're very far away from home and uh, a lot of them that are relatively well don't even have anything to pass their time. So we started to collect German books and magazines for these Germans and took them up to Jundalup Hospital uh, via Megan Gregg, Kathy Clark's daughter who works as a doctor at Jundalup Hospital, who very graciously took them there and uh, took them to the ward where those COVID-19 patients were. We also prayed for these people uh, on a Thursday morning prayer time that Christine Hansen facilitates. And we mentioned in handwritten notes to each one of those patients that we are praying for these people and that at this time we're lifting them up before the Lord for hope, for healing and encouragement. And as part of our prayers today, um, we want to include these people that the Holy Spirit will continue the good work that he started in their hearts. And I also praise God for people like Richarda who are servant hearted and always looking for opportunities to serve and bless people in their community. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for Marina who shared with us today. Bless her and Thomas as they continue to quarantine at home. Comfort them in their sadness of not being able to visit us here in Perth for an unknown time and continue to lead and guide them through life every day. We bring the German people before you. Help them in their struggle with COVID-19. Thank you for Angela Merkel and her officials for making decisions that have helped to keep the German public protected and the corona death cases relatively low. Be with the doctors and all medical staff as they treat patients with COVID-19. Protect them and continue to help hospitals and all other places in need of protective equipment to source enough gloves, face masks, and whatever else they need. Lord, bring hope to the families of those who have lost loved ones to the virus as they mourn. We pray that you can continue to give patience to the German people as they navigate through the slow reopening of shops, schools and workplaces. Give the German people a spirit of generosity as they are well equipped during this time of a worldwide pandemic. Let them be wise to share of their resources and medical capacities with other countries who are suffering even more. Lord, we bring before you the Germans and other passengers of the Artania cruise ship that have been infected with COVID-19. Bring healing to them and be with the families of those who have died. We pray that the way people from our congregation have prayed for them will start the good work of the Holy Spirit in their hearts. May their eyes be opened to you 
and may they be drawn closer to you through this event. Protect Megan Gregg and all medical staff at Joondalup Hospital and in all places where COVID-19 patients are treated. We pray that you will continue to have mercy on your world and also us here in Australia. Thank you for Scott Morrison and all Australian leaders who are navigating us through this crisis well. We pray for continued protection on all of us here at Concordia and as we are praying now, wherever we are. Protect us from the coronavirus and keep us well so we don't get sick. Make us a radiant beacon of your light every day. Refresh and renew us now and renew each day with your promises and the hope we find in you. Give us your vision and your strength. We cannot bear the things of this world without you, but we need you in everything, God. Bless our Pastor Michael and all who serve our congregation faithfully. Be with all pastors and bishops as they tirelessly work to make church possible during these unprecedented times in all churches here in Australia and worldwide. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Thank you for being part of the service tonight. I'm going to leave you with a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. We're going to end with the singing of a hymn tonight. And it is a hymn that uh, was uh, written by the German, the, the German theologian and pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer that we were talking about today. He wrote this in prison while he was... Um, incarcerated there awaiting his death and I thought that these words were so full of meaning especially in the face of death and even though we are facing imminent death we are going through a troubled time and I thought the words of this hymn spoke really beautifully into our situation so I'll let you go and look forward to meeting you again here in the spot next Wednesday Yeah.